Hello everyone, it's Alex. Welcome back or welcome to my channel. Welcome to my studio. I'm happy that you're here. We're gonna do a little paint with me vlog today. This is another one in the summer studio vlog series. Today, instead of doing my whole day, I thought it would be nice to just get my afternoon painting process. I spent a lot of time this morning working on my website, getting information for pet portrait commissions all organized and up, and it's looking really good. I'm feeling really confident about that, and I'm inspired to do some painting. So I'm going to try to spend a few hours this afternoon really focused on making a few more good paintings. And I would like to do kind of a whole start to finish process of bringing probably just one good painting to life. I have a few, well, I have two, but they're the same size, two 18 by 18 inch canvases that I'd like to create works on. So we're going to start from the very beginning and look for some reference photos, get some ideas, do some sketches, um, and sort of like thumbnails to make sure that I feel good about the composition and everything and then we'll start painting and if we need to finish the final layers of the painting tomorrow then I, we can do that and I'll include that in this video too but come along with me let's make a painting this is exciting <laughs> my living room. Um, so I have no idea what I'm going to do for this painting, but I know I want to make a painting. And typically that's not how <laughs> my process is started. Usually I, especially for like these larger pieces, I have an idea beforehand, but I feel like I really want to use these canvases and I think that they're just going to sit there if I don't intentionally like figure something out um, and get started on them. Um, I do have a a market that I'm going to be doing in, it's about two months away, um, but I'd really like to have some really nice work for that. If I have a few um, of these larger acrylic paintings that I could turn into prints before then, I think that would be a really great um, lower priced item as well as just some like eye catching pieces to bring people into my booth. Um, so what I want to do first is look at reference photos that I've already collected. I spend a lot of time on Pexels online, which is a resource for free photos that you can use for whatever you want. Um, I also have just photos from my phone, my camera roll, or that people have sent me um, that I like that I save on my external hard drive under reference photos. I have it all kind of organized so I can look through that first. And then maybe if I see something that catches my eye, but it's not perfect, I can continue looking um, on Pexels or see what I have. Um, on my phone and everything to find a good reference photo for this painting. So that is what I am doing right now is just looking in my own files. We'll start there. Okay, just kind of preliminarily, preliminarily looking um, at my photos, the ones from my camera roll specifically. I have this photo that I took at a wedding that I went to last summer. Um, that I created a small painting of. Um, I'll show the, the reference photo. It's a tablescape from a wedding that we went to. And then the painting that I created. Um, and I really like how this came out. This is a small piece. It's like nine by 12 or eight by 10. 
um, it's small and it might be nice to do a larger piece and get more detail using that same photo as reference and using that color scheme that I used in that small painting. So that's one idea. Create a bigger version of that. Another idea that I have is going to be inspired by this picture from my camera roll of like a little um, like flower shop, the outside of a flower shop. I'll put the photo that I have from my camera here. Um, this is not like a great composition. I think I would drive myself crazy trying to get all of these flowers in it. So I think I'm going to look online for a little bit for other like flower market, flower shop style reference photos that I could use. And maybe I could um, kind of replace, um, if I find a reference photo that I like, replace maybe some of the flowers that I found with the flowers in the photo, that kind of thing. Because sometimes in painting, especially whenever they have a lot going on, having some details be more abstracted um, makes it easier to look at as well as easier to paint. Um, so let me uh, look for some photos online to get some more inspiration for this flower market idea because I do like the idea of doing something completely new. Okay, I think that I'm liking this idea better, um, especially thinking like I'm really feeling energized to just do a painting right now and I feel I think more confident that I can execute this at this scale that kind of thing anyway so let me show you some photos that I found I have been thinking about uh, chrysanthemums a lot I don't know why um I think they're really pretty as like um, like line work illustrations um, and I just had some I was drawing some in my sketchbook and the way that they're drawn in like a tattoo style and stuff like that it's just like really cool and I haven't really made a good drawing or painting of a chrysanthemum ever um, so I was looking at reference photos for chrysanthemums and I found this one there's a woman in this photo and I would not do the woman I would just do <laughs> kind of the shape of this flower that she is holding. This is a chrysanthemum. Um, so I'm thinking using this um, like angle <laughs> of the flower as reference for kind of the directions that the petals are going. But instead of doing this bright orange color, I think I would like to do, this is another one. So this is a small one, um, but kind of using that big, really fluffy full one but doing it in this um, light pink and white color um, with the kind of yellowy tint on the very center leaves and it getting kind of more pink towards the outside. I think that would be really pretty and dynamic. And then just doing um, a solid background, not pink like this. I don't like how much this um, like blends in, um, but probably doing some kind of like yellowy green, like a chartreuse olive-y kind of green, um, something like that maybe as the background. Um, I have a tendency to do blue backgrounds um, and I want my, I want my paintings to have different colors, like whenever they're hung together in my booth or there's pictures of them on my website together, I would really like them to have different color backgrounds and different color elements because I like a colorful and bright aesthetic and this picture is not gonna have a ton of colors um, but putting it with my other work I think it having something different in the background will be good. Welcome to my sketchbook. So I'm going to do a drawing here based on that photo of the chrysanthemum that was, the woman was holding that bright orange one that I showed you guys. So here I set up my camera above my desk and I'm looking at that photo on my desktop kind of loosely trying to get the angles of where 
the petals are going onto this sketchbook page. Um, I already had stuff on this page, of course, my little lemons and monarch just doodles from the other day. And I try to fill up the pages and just add different stuff wherever I feel like it works. Um, so I'm just adding this to this sketchbook spread. You'll see me kind of move around, kind of working from the center and adding petals towards the outside. And then I'll just let you guys watch this for a little bit, speed it up a little bit. And then you'll see me go in with the same pencil and everything, but kind of harden and solidify the lines as I make kind of final decisions about where these lines are gonna go. Another thing that I'll do before I actually start painting on this 18 by 18 canvas is to create a full size drawing to transfer over. That helps me feel so much better about the lines that I'm putting down and everything. I can get a lot more detail if I can change and rearrange on a pencil drawing and then transfer it over instead of just going in with paint. Because then if I really don't like it and want to move something, I usually have to wait for that paint to dry and like kind of go over it. It's just easier in the kind of setup composition phase um, to start with a full size drawing. So that is what we're going to do next. made a sketch. I got a video of it. I hope it comes out good for you guys. Um, I really like how the petals are placed. You can really get a sense of like the direction and stuff. I was worried about this. thought it would take longer than it did, but I am happy with this. Um, because I liked it so much, I also traced it um, because I'm thinking about using this as a sticker design. Let me know if you're into like stickers <laughs> because they're pretty like hard for me to make because I don't do a lot of digital work um but I am interested in making some stickers that I can have them as part of my booth it'd be a really affordable option for people who want to support me and I've just kind of been having fun with it the last few days and making a few like kind of trial sticker designs and I think once I have more I want to ask some of my friends and my partner and stuff like get a feel for like which ones they think are good and worth putting into production um so be on the lookout for that especially if you like follow me on instagram i might put them on my stories or something at some point um but yeah i like this line work what i do um is i trace a drawing that I like in my sketchbook or something, I'll trace it onto tracing paper like this with a pen. Then I take a photo of this um, and trace it in Illustrator. Like not trace it in Illustrator, but like Illustrator has a function called image trace that will convert it to a vector image. Um, and then I can make it transparent and then I can fill that in on Adobe Fresco. I'm kind of playing with some other ways of making little designs for stickers too, but that's kind of my tried and true method. Whenever I made stickers years ago for my little shop, I um, used Illustrator. 
and started with a hand drawn line drawing. But yeah, I really like this, right? Um, so what I think I want to do is scale up this exact picture to work from on the full size. So I'm going to take a photo of this. Um, and then scale this up to print it to be 18 by 18. So I'm going to do some math, figure out maybe if I, if I put this, okay. Is that more effort than it's worth? Like, should I just redraw this at 18 by 18? I could just redraw, redraw it on another piece of paper, but I'm thinking about doing this tracing method just because I really like how these are sitting and I just really anticipated having issues with where all these front ones, like the way they're laying. And I like how it looks, so I think I'm gonna do my tracing method. Yeah, I'll let y'all know how it goes. I'll record it if I can, but I'm like really awkward on the computer and I'm like sitting super close to it, so it might be weird to try to film and put in the vlog. This worked even better than I expected. These are my pattern pieces. See? Um, so I made a... I realized this canvas is not 18 by 18, it is 20 by 20. So I made a 20 by 20 artboard in Illustrator, made a really simple grid on it, and then whenever you go to print, if you go to print straight from Illustrator, it will print like your image size and you can move it around to select like which part of the image you, image you want to print. So it was printing it like to scale, but only a little bit of it because my artboard was 20 by 20 and my paper is eight and a half by 11. So I printed the top left, the bottom left, top right, bottom right, top middle, bottom middle. And now I just need to kind of take these in the spots where they overlap because it's they don't like match up perfect. Um, but there's a really faint line. So you can see here, like this is my middle line and this is my bottom middle piece. This is my top middle piece and this is my middle line. So I just need to cut one of them on that line so that I can take them together. Um, and then I'll have my full size image. Um, and I'm really, really happy with this because I feel so confident putting this straight onto my canvas. I'm going to trace it out so that I have the lines. Then I think I'm going to go in with a fairly dark color of paint, probably a blue, so that I have all of the lines on my white canvas. What I'm going to do after that is go in with my background color, um, and it won't completely cover up the blue because I did it with a dark color. Um, so we'll do the outline, then the background color before we start filling in the petals. Because there's so many petals and there's going to be so many different little areas of shading and stuff, I think getting that background color in before is going to make my life easier. Um, so let me get these taped together and I'll show you what it looks like. strokes in this size for the petals. Um, so what we do next is we want to transfer this onto my canvas. 
which is right up here. And my preferred transfer method is going to be to take this, because this is just on, printed on regular printer paper and all the tape is on the front. I'm going to rub charcoal all over the back, lay it on my canvas. So this is like just the right size of my canvas. And then I'm going to go over this image with a pen and it'll transfer those pen lines. Like it'll transfer the charcoal that's on the back of the sheet onto the canvas. Um, it's a pretty low tech, cheap, easy transfer method. I do this all the time. So it's just a really light charcoal line where I traced over that. And I think that this looks really good. Um, the edge of the flower is coming over the edge just a little bit down here and a little bit up here, which I think will be a good like balanced composition situation. And I'm going to change, I didn't trace the stem because I think I'm going to change the stem to be a little bit more upright whenever I adjust it ended up being kind of like shooting out a little bit too much but that's super easy um, so I think we're ready to start painting on this
guys um look how good it's coming out it's my shadow is on it i'm sorry my light is over here but we um yeah that last clip where i was really filling in all the pink and white and yellow that was 30 minutes or so of starting to like fill it in and block in the color and i think i'm gonna take a break on this for now and try to finish it up tomorrow um my wrists are kind of bothering me um which i don't usually have that issue whenever i'm painting but i think because this is a little bit bigger than um what i typically work on um and really getting it all filled in tracing it and everything i don't know it's i guess it's been a few a few hours of working on it and like holding my arms like up i don't know but i definitely want to give my wrists a little bit of a break and i will be finishing this up tomorrow i'm feeling really good about it so i just wanted to show y'all where we're at at the end of day one